welcome to both sides. Should black jurors create another system of justice for black defendants? One of our guests says they should. He's a Harvard Law graduate uh, who teaches and does research in criminal law at George Washington Law School in Washington, D.C. He's a former federal prosecutor. Paul Butler, tell us why you say black jurors should ignore the evidence and let black defendants in nonviolent cases go free. There are too many black people in jail for nonviolent conduct. White people, by and large, don't go to prison for that kind of conduct. Black people should not use their power as jurors to endorse this racism in criminal justice. Uh, aren't you saying that if the system doesn't fit, acquit? I'm telling African Americans, if American criminal justice means just us, we ought to just say no. Should African American jurors let black defendants go free, even if they're guilty, so long as their crime was nonviolent? Joining us for our discussion will be Paul Butler, uh, and Victoria Tonsing. Uh, she's a former Deputy Assistant Attorney General in the Criminal Division of the Justice Department. Uh, uh, she established the Terrorism Unit at Justice. Professor Paul Rothstein of the Georgetown University Law School is well known for his work in the area of evidence and he's an expert on judicial developments. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Now, now Paul, it doesn't surprise you that, that this proposal has created a stir. What are you trying to gain by it? I, I'm trying to gain an appreciation that there are too many black people in jail and that there's something that African Americans can do about it because we know that all of these young men don't belong in jail. One out of three young black men under criminal justice supervision, there's something fundamentally wrong with criminal justice if that's the result. Paul Rothstein, there are historical precedents for what he's saying. It, it sounds many people on the face may be a bit bizarre, but there are historical precedents. What are they? In common law England, it was frequently said that uh, the jurors could uh, step in when they thought there was an unjust law that they were asked to enforce and say, we just don't agree with that law. In fact, in our own early colonial history, um, there's a very famous case involving a guy named Zenger. Uh, he was a, a publisher and an editor, a reporter, and he wrote some bad things about the British colonial government that was governing the colonies at the time. It was clearly seditious libel, the crime of seditious libel under the law at the time, but the jurors let him off anyway, even though they were convinced he was guilty because they thought it was an, an unjust law. But I, I, would, I would say this, that you do have to be careful because uh, if you step in to, uh, if the jurors step in to nullify an unjust law, it can uh, cut against you sometimes too because uh, some of the white juries in the civil rights days in the 60s were letting people off uh, who had killed black and white civil rights workers because they thought it was unjust that they should be convicted. So you see that the high side and low side would be what? Well, I think that the, the community, the jurors that is, ought to be able to step in and mitigate the harshness of the law when there is an unjust law or it's being applied in an unjust way. And in fact, in the state of Maryland, they are instructed that they are the judges of the law as well as the fact. That's somewhat unusual. But I think you have to be careful not use it, and I know uh, uh, Professor Butler agrees with this, you not use it when it's a crime of violence or, or murder or where it's really a clear-cut that, case. That's real close to Janet Cochran telling the jury to send, to, to send a message, and for that he was, he was scalded. Victoria, how, how does all of this strike you? <laughs> well, I can't believe that Professor Butler is seriously positing this position that black jurors should let off, should acquit black defendants in certain kinds of crimes. It is, it is a position that is so irresponsible, divisive, and of course racist that I am amazed that you're doing this in any serious vein, that you may be playing the professor and sitting back and throwing out that bombshell, sort of like Pat Buchanan does, and let the bits fall where they may, just to enliven debate. Well, but I cannot believe that this is a serious issue. It's, I'm very what? serious. Why isn't your amazement directed at how racist the criminal justice system is? What are you doing about the problem of so many young African American people under criminal justice supervision? Are you equally outraged about that? Listen. I was a prosecutor for 10 years I was in the system okay, so and you I felt in jail. that when I was in the system that and I also made decisions when not to go on cases. So if you have good prosecutors and you have blacks and whites and males and females and a diversity in your prosecution 
arena as we are doing now in our system, then you have decisions being made, not on racist or sexist terms, but, but, Victor, but from the very diversity that you say isn't there. To, to play this out, couldn't this be a big if, for example, African Americans are 12% of the population, 55% of the jail population. Much of this driven by of five grams of crack cocaine, first time non-violent offenders, five years. 500 grams of powder you can get, in fact, Jesse, probation. if we want to talk about crack cocaine, do I think that there is a disparity in the sentences? A, racial, I think, a racial disparity? Yeah, I think it ends up, it wasn't that way when the law was passed, but if we are now all looking at that and say, hey, there's disparity here, then the, 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 the cure is to change that law but not to go out and tell a certain race you should acquit only members of your race. What about Vietnamese people? You know what, Victoria, we tried to change that juries. law with crack cocaine. What about cocaine. Mexicans? We tried to change the law with crack cocaine. We petitioned the government, which is what we're supposed to do under the Constitution. The Sentencing Commission told the President, told mm -hmm. the Congress, it's a bad racist law. Congress, right. the President just said, no, what are we supposed to do? Paul, you're driving a theory here. Uh, that, that in effect says all but the most violent criminals should be released. No, I'm saying anybody who victimizes the community belongs in jail for the protection of the community. But if you're a non-violent offender, jail isn't the best place for you. We, don't, we know that alcohol causes more injury to society than all hard drugs com combined. But we don't lock up alcohol users. We don't lock up tobacco sellers, even though they're causing more deaths. You but also say in your article that it's all right if somebody who is poor robs somebody who is wealthy, whatever that is. I'm not sure what that is. And that those people should be acquitted. So the poll. I'm saying that it, it, sometimes African-American jurors perceive poor people stealing from rich people as kind of a Robin Hood effect, if you will. Property, so they should acquit also. property is distributed in this country on a racial basis. Everything you have, Victoria, you have in part because you're white. Everything a black person doesn't have, he doesn't have in that part because he's black. That is such a racist black. statement. That it's I reality. So but, but, but Paul, yeah. Paul, it's Paul, reflective that, of racism in American legal Paul, society. Yeah. But Paul, that, that goes to the heart of the integrity of black jurors and could very well jeopardize their safety. Well, it's, it goes to the integrity of the jury system. The reason that we have juries making these decisions is to prevent oppression by the government. That is the basis of the Seventh and Sixth Amendment right to a jury trial. So we've always asked jurors to judge the law as well as the facts. But, Do you but, want but, but since most of the victims of, of crime uh, by blacks uh, came from other all blacks, how do you think the black community will respond to this? Well, again, I'm suggesting when black people or any people, white or black, are victimized, then black jurors ought to lock those people up if they think they're guilty. My proposal only applies in victimless, nonviolent crime. And the fact is, I'm not How making up... How can robbery be not victimless? How can my, robbery ever be victimless? Well, I'm, I'm not suggesting that jury nullification should ever happen in a robbery case. Yes, you did. Well, you said if they're, oh, if they're still from the wealthy, oh, from burglary. Let me burglary. ask you a question. Remember the difference from law yes, school. Burglary yes, is nonviolent. Yeah. For our Let listeners, me ask you a question. Professor Rustay. Pa Paul, would, would you want to give the same power to a white jury to disobey the law? when they thought a black person was not guilty but that he maybe was a dangerous kind of guy and maybe we ought to put him away anyway to protect our communities. If, if white jurors want to participate in my proposal, I think that that would be fine. In fact, that would focus attention on the political problem much quicker than if only white jurors did. The fact is the United States locks up more people than any country in, in the world. We use prison as an answer to social problems. And if white people want to help deal with that issue, that's great. See, I think we Take might be... Second. No, 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 something no. called a commercial break. Sure. Okay. Uh, talking about black jurors and nullification. When we come back, are we asking too much legal judgment of these jurors? Stay with us.